Welcome to Calvary Episcopal Church in Columbia, Missouri. We're so glad you've joined us for our worship as we celebrate All Saints Day. We especially welcome as officiant and pre preacher, the Reverend Canon Doris Westfall, our diocesan canon to the ordinary. This is a right to service of anti-communion, which means everything that happens before the sharing of communion at our regular Sunday service of Holy Eucharist. We have a full service bulletin for you on our website, that is www.calvaryonnth.org, or you can follow along in the Book of Common Prayer beginning on page 355. Our hymns come from the 1982 hymnal, what we affectionately call the Blue Hymnal, and other approved sources. Our opening hymn is A Litany of All the Saints. The sun parts are from the blue hymnal, number 287. Holy ones present at our beginnings. Stand here beside us. Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and Rachel and Leah, makers of the covenant, forebearers of our race. Stand here beside us. Elizabeth and Simeon, Joseph, Monica and Helen, exemplars in the love and care of children. Stand here beside us. John the baptizer, map maker of the Lord's coming. Stand here beside us. Holy ones who showed the good news to be the way of life. Stand here beside us. Thomas the Doubter, Augustine of Canterbury, Francis Xavier, Samuel Joseph Sheseskiewski, all travelers who carried the gospel to distant places. Stand here beside us. Bernard and Dominic, Catherine of Siena, the scourge of popes, John and Charles Wesley, Preachers in the streets, all those power of, with the power of speaking gave life to the written, written word. Stand here beside us. Benedict of Nursia, Teresa of Avila, Nicholas Farrar, Elizabeth Ann Seton, Richard Benson, Charles de Foucault, all founders of communities. Stand here beside us. Holy ones who gave their lives to the care of others. Stand here beside us. Louis, King of France. Margaret, Queen of Scotland. Gandhi, the Mahatma. Reproach to the churches. Dag Hammarskjöld, the bureaucrat. All who made governance an act of faith. Stand here beside us. Peter of the Keys, denier of the Lord. <clears throat> Ambrose of Milan who answered the church's summons, Hilda, abbess at Whitby, Robert Grostest, bishop of Lincoln, protector of the Jews, Jean-Baptiste Vianney, cure d'Ars, patient hearer of catalogs of sins, 
all faithful shepherds of the master's flock. Stand here beside us. Mary Magdalene, anointer of the Lord's feet, Luke the physician, Francis who kissed the leper, Florence Nightingale, Albert Schweitzer, all who brought to the sick and suffering the hands of healing. Stand here beside us. Holy ones who made the proclaiming of God's love a work of art. Stand here beside us. Perilugi da Palestrina, John Merbeck, Johann Sebastian Bach, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, Benjamin Britten, Duke Ellington, all who sang the creator's praises in the language of the soul. Stand here beside us. David and the Psalmists, Cadman, John Milton, sketcher of paradise, William Blake, builder of Jerusalem, John Mason Neal, preserver of the past, all poets of the celestial vision. Stand here beside us. Zacchaeus the tree climber, Brother Lawrence, Teresa of Lusso, the little flower, Andrew of Glasshampton, all cultivators of holy simplicity. Stand here beside us. Holy ones haunted by the justice and mercy of God. Stand here beside us. Amos of Tequa, who held up the plumb line. John Wycliffe, who brought the scripture to the common folk. John Huss and Menno Simons, generals in the Lamb's War. Mountain L Martin Luther, who could do no other. George Fox, foe of steeple houses. All who kept the church ever reforming. Stand here beside us. Paul the Apostle, transfixed by noonday light. Augustine of Hippo, God's city planner. Thomas Aquinas and John Calvin, architects of the divine. Charles Williams, teacher of coherence. Karl Barth, however of all unknowable. All who saw God at work and wrote down what they saw. Stand here beside us. John the seer of Patmos, Anthony of the desert, Julian the anchoress of Norwich, Hildegard the Sibyl of the Rhine, Meister Eckhart, Bernadette of Lourdes, all who were called to see the master's face. Stand here beside us. Joachim of Fiora, prophet of the new age, Johnny Appleseed, mad planter of Eden, sojourner truth, pilgrim of justice, Benedict Joseph Lebrer, priest and panhandler, all who love for God was beyond containment. Stand here beside us. Holy ones who died in witness to the Christ. Stand here beside us. Stephen the deacon, the first martyr, stoned in Jerusalem. Stand here beside us. Justin, Ignatian and Poly, Ignatius and Polycarp, who refused the incense to Caesar. Stand here beside us. Perpetua and Felicity, torn by beasts in the arena at Carthage. Stand here beside us. Thomas Cranmer, Hugh Latimer, and Nicholas Ridley, burned in Oxford. Stand here beside us. Maximilian Colby and Edith Stein, put to death at Auschwitz. Stand here beside us. James Reeb, Jonathan Daniels, Michael Schwerner, Medgar Evans, Viola Liozzo, shot in the South. Stand here beside us. Martin Luther King, shot in Memphis. Stand here beside us. Ja'ani Luam, shot in Kampala. Stand here beside us. Oscar Romero, shot in San Salvador. Stand here beside us. Martyrs of Rome, of Lyon, of Japan, of Eastern Equatorial Africa, of Uganda, of Mel Melanesia, martyrs of everywhere. 
Stand here beside us. Holy ones of every time and place. Stand here beside us. Glorious company of heaven. Stand here beside us. All climbers of the ladder of paradise. Stand here beside us. All runners of the celestial peace. Stand here beside us. Great cloud of witnesses. Stand here beside us. Mary, most holy, chief of the saints. Stand here beside us. Mary, most holy, yes, sayer to God. Stand here beside us. Mary, most holy, unmarried mother. Stand here beside us. Mary, most holy, gate of heaven and ark of the covenant. Stand here beside us. Jesus, our liberator, creator of all. Stand here beside us. Jesus, our liberator, redeemer of all. Stand here beside us. Jesus, our liberator, sanctifier of all. Stand here beside us. Jesus, our liberator, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Stand here beside us. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. God is in you. And also in you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Revelation. After this, I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, 
nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 34. We'll read verses 1 through 10 and 22 in unison. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants and none will be punished who trust in him. The second reading is from the first letter of John. See what love of the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual hymn for today is number 293, I Sing a Song of the Saints of God. We will sing verses 1 and 3. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. 
Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Good morning, saints. And if that greeting sounds funny, it really shouldn't. For that is what you are, and that is what you are becoming. If you think sainthood is only bestowed by the Vatican, after an exhaustive investigation of three miracles performed by you and after several hundred years after you were dead, hopefully by the end of this homily, you'll think otherwise. Sainthood is so much closer and so much more attainable than that. All Saints is my favorite litur liturgical feast. It's a day of thanksgiving and gratitude of solemnity and of hope. All Saints pulls me back in time to remember all those who have gone before, those who lived and died confessing Jesus as their Lord, often under persecution and dire circumstances, as well as those who simply, humbly, lovingly walked with God and shared that walk with others. But All Saints also pushes me into the future. It gives me a glimpse of a time when I will no longer be here on earth. And it whispers the question in my ear, are you living the life that God wants you to live? Are you living in such a way that others can be lifted up by you, that they can stand on your shoulders so they can see and live and pass on the good news of God in Christ. All Saints is ultimately a feast of praise that celebrates our identity as God's children. So today we remember those saints whose heroic exploits and feats of amazing courage awed us. And we remember those whose names the institutional church may not know but who were, who were and are saints in our lives, showing us how a life lived in faith and love and service reflects God. I had someone say to me recently, well, you know, I'm not exactly Mother Teresa. And my response was, I'm so glad. God doesn't want you to be Mother Teresa. God wants you to be who God has made you to be. There was only one Teresa of Calcutta. There was only one Joan of Arc, John the Baptist, or St. Martin of Tours. And there's only one you. Each person has the opportunity and the calling to uniquely live out the gospel and share Jesus with the world in ways that only they can show. Looking to others for examples of holy living and holy dying is wonderful and necessary and very important. However, the example shown to us in the lives of the saints can give us strength and courage in doing the hard work of being Christ's hands in the world right now. We need to look to them not so that we can become them, but so that we can become more of our God-given selves. Sainthood 
is not ultimately bestowed by anyone other than God. And it is both a divine act and a process of becoming who we were meant to be. What I find so hopeful about All Saints is that it reminds me that perfection is not a requirement of living a holy life and of being a saint. And that's so important, I'm going to repeat myself. What I find so hopeful about All Saints is that it reminds me that perfection is not a requirement for living a holy life and being a saint. And if perfection is not required, then that has some very deep repercussions for my life. Not being perfect is no longer an excuse for not being holy. Not being perfect can no longer be an excuse for not doing what God has asked of me. The other thing not being perfect has shown me is that God has a sense of humor because of who has been chosen to show God's life to the world. You know, certainly there were those sort of wonderful, humble people, but there are also too many curmudgeons to count. There are so many unlikely characters for God to choose and use. And what is absolutely mind boggling is that God in all wisdom has chosen each and every one of us to be a saint. Now think about that for a moment and then tell me that God doesn't have a sense of humor. All saints is important because it asks us to recognize the examples of those who have gone before and what we can learn from them. All Saints is important because it gives us an opportunity to reflect on those unlikely characters in our lives that God is using to show us how to be more loving. All Saints is important because it whispers in each of our ears the question of whether we are truly living into our identity as a saint of God. All saint is important because it points to the future of those yet to come. Now in many churches there are processions into the columbarium or memorial garden and, and saying of prayers for those we love and who are no longer with us. Naming them before God and one another is a very holy thing to do. In years to come, our names will be added to those spoken. We will become the remembered. We will become part of that great cloud of witnesses that John writes about. During this strange time, during this difficult isolating and peculiar time. We see and interact with far fewer people than normal and those that we do see may be masked. We may only be able to see their eyes, but I want you to look, really look to one another. Look at each other and see the sainthood in that person standing six feet from you. If you know them, Ask yourself how that person has helped you live into your identity as a child of God, as a saint of God. And then ask yourself how you have helped them do the same. And if you don't know them, still look at them. Smile with your eyes and ask yourself what they, what they might have to teach you. How might this unknown and unfamiliar saint help you to live more authentically as a saint of God? All Saints is not just a remembrance of the past or an honoring of the present. All Saints is a celebration of the future we want to create. It is a celebration of living into our own sainthood as well as living in such a way that we bring out the sainthood of others. And when we do that, when we see the divine in everyone we meet, 
I have no doubt that the future will be very bright. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed saying together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in the promise of new life in Christ, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We pray for your holy Catholic Church. Fill it with your truth and empower its people to joyfully share and live the good news of Jesus Christ. We pray for all ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, Presiding Bishop of the Episcopal Church, Dion, Bishop of Missouri, Valerie, our Interim Rector, Janet, our Deacon, Mo, our Pastoral Visitor, and Josh, our Seminarian. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you and that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for the whole world that you may fill it with your peace. Help us to honor and care for your creation and to use its resources wisely for the good of all. We pray for those who govern and hold authority that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world especially for Donald, our president, Mike, our governor, Brian, our mayor, Stephanie, our county health director, and Peter, Columbia Public Schools superintendent. May there be justice and peace on the earth. We pray for those who are in need, for those who are hungry or homeless, for the sick and the injured, and for those who do not yet know God's love. We pray for those suffering from the two pandemics of coronavirus and racism. Have compassion on those on our parish prayer list and those we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. For those hospitalized and the medical workers who care for them and for the divine family as they grieve. May all be delivered from their distress. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially for the beauty of the earth. We give you thanks and ask your blessing on all who are searching for treatments and vaccines to fight the coronavirus and we pray for other blessings we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. 
We thank you, Lord, for Bishop Dion and Canon Doris and their comforting and encouraging words. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. Give to the departed eternal rest. We pray especially for Sharon Divine and any others of whom you are aware. Let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And now I introduce Tom Frankman, our vestry person, who will give us our announcements of what's going on at Calvary. Bishop Dion Johnson has published a pastoral letter and a video for this All Saints season. The information, the links to that are available in the newsletters you've received from Calvary and in the uh, uh, announcement accompanying this service. Our stewardship drive is underway. There's information about that on the Calvary website. If you have any questions about, uh, about the drive, please contact the church office or Bob Worley. Right. Our bazaar will go on as planned. It will begin on December, it will be on December the 5th. Uh, all items for that will be need to be available by uh, mid-November for uh, display on the website. If you have any questions about that, please contact Leon Leanne Ball. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Bennett Fallis, and it is a privilege to be able to share a few words with you today. Um, about what the church means to me, uh, my wife Kim, and my four children, Joseph, Madeline, Andrew, and Catherine, as we enter the stewardship season. And so what I'd like to reflect upon are, are three things. Uh, number one, what the church has meant to me over the years. Um, I think I'd like to reflect upon some of the ministries of, of Calvary and the amazing work that uh, the people of Calvary have done and some of the ministries that I've helped serve on with many of you. And then lastly, what stewardship means to me um, and, and as, as I express my gratitude and experience the joy of giving uh, to Calvary and the church. So for those that I have not met, I've been a parishioner for uh, over 35 years. My father was the Episcopal priest at Calvary for nearly 17 years. And as a preacher's kid, you can imagine church was at the center of everything that we did, um, not just on Sundays, but virtually every day. And I think back and reflect on how blessed I was to have that sense of community at an early age uh, was, was absolutely amazing and made a huge impact on my heart and still to this day. 
Uh, I also want to reflect upon is that Calvary has been a center part of all of you know big events in my life, celebrations, so weddings, um, baptisms, celebrations with with friends. Uh, it's it been a it been a really important piece uh, where I've experienced many elements of joy in the sanctuary with the people of Calvary. I also experience God's healing as losing my mom and dad at an early age. God's healing was expressed through the people of Calvary uh, and continues to this day. And in fact, that's one of the, the gifts that I continue to benefit from is to hear the stories of how my mom and dad touched so many people um, at Calvary. And, and it really helps me keep my dad's spirit alive, but it also helps my children understand and get to know their grandparents. And, and I think of the gift of that is, is amazing. I also want to touch upon some of the ministries that, that Calvary has and um, some of the ministries that I've served on. So I've, I've served on vestry. I've served as a junior warden. Um, I've served on loaves and fishes with many of you, room at the inn. And, and these are just a few of all the great things that we do to serve the downtown community and, and the Columbia community. I think of the bazaar, and I think of all the people that help out with the bazaar, whether it be the people uh, making the church mices, mice, um, or it's the, the people that are in the kitchen, or the children that are serving plates. It's all many people coming together to serve the community. And, and I, I think back is, that is just a, an amazing piece to the fabric of, of Calvary and, and who we are. So and lastly, I'd like to touch upon uh, stewardship. And stewardship, I'd like to reflect on a quote from Corinthians. And, and Paul said that each of you must give as you have made up your own mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And to me, what that means is, is, is the sense of gratitude that Stewardship in the season is a time for us to give thanks to all the blessings and all the gifts that God has given us. And with that, it, you can give with a joyful heart. And as you consider how you can help Calvary the stewardship season, is reflect upon all the gifts of, of Calvary and, and, and what the parish has given to you, but then also the ability to serve as community and, and how Calvary has helped so many people in so many ways through the ministries that are unique to our church. Oh, and
Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 620, Jerusalem, My Happy Home. We will sing verses 1, 2, and 5. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.